good evening, everyone. I think um, from my perspective, there's a lot that I'd like to say, and it's actually quite strange how much I've got to say because I was worried that I wouldn't even be able to speak for five minutes. Um, but but I'm, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to participate in this discussion, and uh, I, I guess to give to give my own personal thoughts about black theology, black consciousness, because it's really an area and a space which um, I think as a, as a young South African, we don't really get to engage with sufficiently and we don't really get to participate in, in public discourse and to reflect on what um, these ideologies mean to us and, and how we take the struggle forward um, as young people and create our own leadership. Um, so really, I think black theology within the context of, of black consciousness has really meant for me um, trying to marry a political philosophy uh, the philosophies around liberation and where we are currently uh, in, in, in the post-apartheid South Africa with who I am as an individual, what that means to me, uh, what my role and contribution are in society. Um, and, and just trying to unpack, I guess, the, the dichotomy between having a political ideology um, and having a personal philosophy that guides one's, um, guides one's life, uh, philosophy of life, I'm just going to make some comments. I think when I uh, prepared for the session, I was really just reflecting on what Daniel had written in his book. Um, but just off the cuff, I think uh, for me, which I hadn't really covered in my comments, issues which perhaps we could continue to explore would be issues around, uh, I think, fem femininity, um, and the, the masculinization of, of the struggle for liberation and the role of role in the place of women um, and how I guess we can take that, that process forward without necessarily looking I guess at women's participation within liberation as one um, of being the most oppressed I think even though I think that's really very much a conclusion that you or not necessarily a conclusion but part of the discussion is the denigration of women I think it's important that women also take responsibility for their own participation in liberation and how they, um, uh, how they conceptualize themselves, how they participate in the struggle, which was not necessarily one of the recipients of the active uh, workplace. I think Daniel, um, just to comment, Daniel notes, I think how black consciousness inspired uh, South Africans with, with ideas of dignity and self-worth. Um, and then he also touched on the fact that uh, and Osiris' reading of the recovery the stories of actors in the black consciousness movement would demand an inquiry into the intellectual past. Um, and then he notes that this is a field in which African history is unpracticed at best. And I, th I think that's immediately pertinent to that discussion um, and to the discussion around contextual theology in South Africa, or uh, contextual theology in Africa, is the emergence of black theology in, in tandem with liberation theology. Um, because I think the development of theologies, uh, the development of intellectual thought, um, looking at liberation ideologies as well, I think all of these things are linked. Um, so therefore, in the same way no. that I think this book or, or Daniel so doesn't really disclose the criterion that he, that he uses in making that statement of what determines intellectual thought and um, that tends to exclude, I think, from the, from the actual dialogue. African nationalist thinkers from, from that category. Because I think most of us would recognize that African nationalist leaders were very prominent in, in how we developed our own ideologies and in the intellectual debate, even if they were not necessarily recognized as academics. Um, and then I also felt that um, there wasn't sufficient attention placed to the soil or the seeds which gave life to the black consciousness movement. So, um, I think, I think Daniel sort of points out the, the divergence between the black consciousness um, or the lack of consensus between the black consciousness movement and pan-Africanism and African, African thought without recognizing that really black consciousness was a child of, of Africanism, pan-Africanism. Um, as in fact were all political parties and all movements because they really were all part of the process or part of the struggle towards realization of self-affirmation um, with expression that 
ultimately he had to return to the church. And then just to, I guess, make a, make a correction, I think, because there was an issue around the emergence of Ethiopianism uh, and how the Ethiopian movement sort of had, had evolved or developed out of a sense of disgruntled, disgruntlement with, I think, how worship was happening. But I would really, I think, say that the Ethiopian movement or the, um, the origins of the Ethiopian movement went a lot deeper than that. Um, that a common theme, or yeah, Bishop Brown in his book says that a common theme of Ethiopianism was the humiliation at the hands um, of white missionaries. And then within that theme, there was a theme of suffering which alienated them from the mission churches and it drove them into a wilderness where they could uh, find a home for themselves, uh, defend their values with, um, with, while at the same time asserting their right to think for themselves. And linked to all of these things was education, was urbanization, industrialization, and a press which was sympathetic to, to, their, to their cause and to the need for liberation. Uh, for me, it seems that black theology really served as a vehicle um, at a point in time, yes, uh, dealing with issues of humanity, dealing with issues around revelation of God and the relevance of faith in the, fa in the face of suffering, and the contextualization of an enculturation of Christian faith um, in an unequal society where being black was legislated as inferior. So I can't deny history and the profound effect that black consciousness uh, had on the individual and that it had on the collective concepts of self. Um, the movement forced the institutions of, of Christianity, I think, to confront and ask difficult questions of faith. However, I would like to quote a citation of John Mercury, again in Bishop Mania's book, Between Two Stools, um, and Issues of Gospel and Culture, where he mentions that um, Mercury questions the legitimacy of black theology, liberation theologies, uh, feminist theology, because he believes in them some fashionable ideology of the moment has been allowed to have a decisive say in the exposition of Christian thought. And I guess in contrast, uh, contextual theologians would believe that there is no uh, universal theology uh, that is at all times valid. So theology has to take the shape uh, and, and respond to the context around it. Um, and then I guess just really my closing thoughts that uh, Daniel then goes Oh, no, no, sorry, Bishop Brandon then goes on in, in, in this commentary to say that enculturation, which is something, I think, a concept very much linked to uh, the relevance of the Christian church within the black society, uh, to black communities, um, without necessarily having used the word enculturation, I think that this was a very key concept, that it, it needs to help the church take on the post-apartheid mantle of rehabilitating African culture and restoring the dignity of African Children were violated by colonialism and apartheid. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very difficult to know what to say after my two colleagues have.